how to replace the rear camera on the iPhone 14 Pro. This one has had a little bit of damage from a drop and it looks like the lens is cracked from the inside. However, I can't take a photo because it's been on the hot plate for a little bit. Take my word for it, it's broken. Place it on the hot plate. If you don't have a hot plate, you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer. It's gonna spend five minutes on here. Like I said at the start, it's already had a few minutes on there. Then I'm gonna take a pentalobe screwdriver and remove the two screws from the bottom of the device. Store those safely for reinstallation later. Then we're gonna run a bead of isopropyl alcohol around the edge of the phone. You might think it's uncouth to uh, leave the phone on whilst I'm removing the screen, but it's a better idea to do this because you don't want to damage it and you want to make sure that it's not damaged whilst you're removing it. Take a suction cup now and place it on the bottom half of the screen and you're just going to lift up slightly. I'm going to use one of these Dorco blades snapped in half to pry it up and I'm just going to very carefully insert it between the very bottom of the screen and the chassis of the phone. Once I've inserted it, I'm going to lift up with the suction cup and I'm going to pry up with that Dorco blade and eventually the screen is just going to pop like that you want to make sure that the, the blade is sat all the way down to the bottom of the chassis because you can split the frame from the screen and cause problems once you've done that you can add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol that's going to soften the adhesive underneath and then take one of these plastic praying picks and you're going to run it carefully along the edge of the phone adding isopropyl alcohol along the way to make it a little bit easier to remove it and minimize the risk of damaging this screen. These open like a book from right to left. And what we're gonna do, once we've lifted it all this way, I'm gonna just gonna twist it a little bit to create a gap up at the top. Once I've created that gap, I'm just gonna pry on it a little bit and we're just, we're prying it so that we can unhook those hooks. Like I said before, we're gonna make sure that the screen isn't damaged during removal because if it does get damaged, it's gonna be expensive. I'll turn the phone off now, remove the suction cup, and I'll take it over to the workbench now that we've got it open. Like I said before, the screen opens like a book from the front cover. So open it up like that, but you just need to be very careful around this cable here and this cable here because it's still attached. Place a weighted object like a mug behind the screen to stop it from falling over. And now we'll take a tri-wing screwdriver and remove all the screws that are holding down this shield that says A16 Bionic on it. It's important to note whilst we do this repair, and if you are replacing the camera, whilst we're using a genuine pulled part for this repair, it will still come up with the notification in the settings that there's an unrecognized part. This might become old news in the near future with the release of iOS 18, but at the time of recording, I know for a fact that it's gonna pop up in settings saying that it's an unrecognized part and that Apple are unable to verify that it's a genuine camera or not. Once all those screws are removed, I'm gonna take some tweezers and I'm gonna lift up from here and very carefully remove this uh, shield, being careful not to damage any of the cables along the way. I'll now take a plastic opening stick and disconnect the battery to isolate power from the phone, meaning it's now safe to disconnect both the screen connector here and the cable for the front sensor up the top. That now means that we can remove the screen and store that safely for reinstallation later. And then we're gonna move up to this camera area. Now that we're working up in this camera area, I'm gonna protect the front camera and face ID sensor with a little bit of Kapton tape because there is a risk of that getting scratched or damaged whilst we're working around here because there is a risk of that getting scratched or damaged because we're working in this area. Now we're gonna take our tri-wing screwdriver again and remove the screws holding down the shield for the rear camera. The first ones is this small square cluster of tri-wing screws at the bottom. There's another one in this bottom right hand corner of the shield. And then I believe there's one more crosshead screw at the very top, just here. Once they're all out, you can see this becomes a little bit springy. That means that it's freed and we can lift it out with our tweezers and put it to one side. So now that the camera shield's removed, we're gonna take the plastic pick again, or plastic sticks rather, and we're gonna disconnect this cable just here, as well as this one underneath it here. And that should free up the camera now. I found that the easiest way to get these out is by getting our tweezers and lifting up from the top and just sort of getting it out like that. It's a good idea to just leave that in until the very last second because there is always dust floating about in the atmosphere around your work area. So just take it out as soon as you're gonna put another one in 
just to minimise the amount of dust that could get between the camera and the internal, the external lenses. That's the same reason as I keep these sealed up until we're actually going to use them. And the part that I'm using today is, like I said, a genuine pulled part, and I believe we bought this from the Replace Base. I will leave a link in the description below. There you go, genuine AP 14 Pro replacement rear facing main camera module. And like it says, it's a reclaimed part. Replace Base are probably the best company around for these because they're sort of certified. It's not come from a hooky phone and they always have these nice little plastic um, covers on them for your peace of mind. Remove that plastic cover and then we can pull out the rear camera module and it looks like there's something underneath it but it's just between the external and my mat so it's perfectly safe to go on there just have a quick look over these camera lenses make sure that they're clean as well and then drop it in there reconnect the connectors and once they're reconnected we can just go ahead and re-secure the shield you see how there's this little lip on the shield there that needs to tuck in up the top here so put it in on an angle and then let it sit down like that and then we'll go ahead with re-securing the screws back into place starting off with this one up the top the tri-wing one at this bottom right here four in that sort of square arrangement in this bottom left this is an important time to test that the new camera is working and fully functional but for the sake of this video i'll skip that part and then just remind you to make sure that you remove all of the leftover adhesive from around the edges. I know that this part gets skipped all the time, so we'll just click my fingers and this should be clean by the time you see this. So wow, as if by magic, all of that chassis is clean now. I'm just gonna take some uh, acetone and just brush it into the edges to make sure that all the gunk and dust and everything else that's left behind is removed now. It is an important job though, so don't overlook this bit. The seal won't sit on properly if it's not clean enough. For this top area, duck out on the acetone because there is a plastic ear mesh on there. So I'll just use isopropyl alcohol instead and then catch up on any loose bits of adhesive that I might have missed. I'll just show you this uh, plastic mesh thing has a bit of a tendency to come out as well. So just be careful around that. And if it has come out, that's how it looks at the end so this bit here so now we can remove the little bit of protective tape that i put up there make sure that it's sat down right and then we'll reinstall the dust and moisture resistant seal use the wide end of the spudger just to re-secure it down and make sure that it's stuck all the way around being careful of the face rd sensor up the top peel off that top layer just double check the back edge of the screen as well because sometimes the adhesive can stick to the back of there but this one looks pretty clean so we'll just go ahead and re-secure the screen into place as well as this top sensor flex cable push it down make sure that it's sat right and then reconnect the battery if you've not tested it already this is another key point make sure that it's tested before you screw it all down last call for testing pop the mug back behind it pop the shield onto there and now it's just a case of re-securing these screws into place so just make sure that all these screws go back into their correct holes on the logic board and you'll have no problems. The top, the very top screw is longer than the rest of them, so just be aware of that. And with those re-secured now, we'll just make sure that the adhesive's all stuck down and there's one final layer of adhesive to remove. And then we can fold the screen down to close it up, re-secure it in the top, squeeze it down, squeeze it down, and then pop the screws into the bottom of the phone and re-secure those whilst the device is turning back on if it's not turning on just go back a few steps and figure out what's gone wrong it's probably a connector that's not connected properly or you might have damaged a flex cable in which case there might be another video on our channel where you can take a look and replace it when this phone boots up it's going to give us a camera not recognized message like i discussed at the beginning that's not a problem. We discuss it with the customer in advance and we can see that all camera modes are working as we should see them. It's a good idea to do a close-up test and then make sure that the focus changes in and out on all cameras as well. So 2X, 3X, etc. But I'm confident that this repair is now complete. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.